Hi, I'm Lauren Kennedy. Welcome to episode 118 of Art This Week. This week we visit Chris Worley Fine Art and speak with Ruben Nieto about his new exhibition, Shazam. Now for Art This Week. I'm Lauren Kennedy with Art This Week here at Chris Hurley Fine Arts speaking with Ruben Nieto about his new show Shazam! New Paintings by Ruben Nieto. So hi Ruben, thanks hi, for speaking Lauren. with us today. Thank you for having me. Of course. Um, if you want to maybe start by talking about this particular body of work that you're showing today, these newer paintings. Yeah, it's, a, uh, it's a, like a new body of work where before I was incorporating more uh, comic characters. So you could see like a Mighty Mouse, a Porky, Batman. And I like those, so it's kind of like two bodies of work in the same time. But at the same time, I'm doing comic, comic abstractions. So I'm doing comic books that make sense to me. Okay. So I wanted to move away from the comic character so that people can really recognize or identify just one particular character, but just to make reference to the comic book. And then you can identify or you can find any characters that you like, you know? You can see, oh, I can, yeah, this is Mighty Mouse, or so this is Superman, you know? So I play a lot with the, the color selection it has to do with the character that I have in mind at that moment, so that I play with, like, with Superman, I will use those colors, or Batman, okay. Mighty Mouse, or Daffy Dog. So it's just like a hidden message. You, know, like a, you, you like it, but you don't see it, but it's like, mm, that reminds you of somebody, you know? Okay. So, a bit of that. so this is my new body of work. You know, for well, maybe that leads me into the comic books. If you want to talk about your comic book, comic books as your reference, did you grow up reading comic books as a kid, or? Yeah, actually, I. I used to read comic books when I was a kid in mm -hmm. Mexico, and I only read American comic books. I never read Mexican comic books. Don't ask me, <laughs> ask my parents. I don't okay. know. But uh, then, you know, I always wanted to do uh, something with comic books when I went to art school. And it's, it's been cooking in my mind for a while. So when I decided to, okay, put hands on, you know, start conceptually thinking about it, putting it all, all together, I realized that comic books were not interested for me. I wasn't interested in comic books anymore. Like, they didn't make sense. And I had friends that collect them, and you know, I used to go with them like every Sunday and they would get a bunch and they knew everything about it. I was, like, I was just not into them, but I really, really loved the, the, the aesthetics, the formalist as aspect of the comic, the history and everything, you know. So I started getting more, uh, more involved in that and doing more research on that. And then I said, okay, I need to find a way to create my own comic book that makes sense to me. So as part of the process, I also wanted to uh, kind of recontextualize the comic book. I didn't want to create just another comic book. You know, and say, okay, this is my idea, or these are my aesthetics of the Captain America comic book, or the Batman, you know? So that's why I think now I'm moving away from the characters. Not that I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do probably both. Okay. You know, but it's gonna be more, less in, in, invasive, you know, less intrusive, the character, maybe. So when you first started using the comic books, and were, was there a narrative element to it, or were you just using the images? Uh, well, I realized it was, that's, I'm glad you mentioned that, uh, but reading the comic book, I realized that it didn't make sense to me, but if I remove the text, if I take that text and put it in a different context, it will make sense. It will, it will have their own, its own meaning, M more like a social commentary. Okay. So I, I started playing with erasing the text, like if you read it, it will make Kind of, kind of make sense in English or Spanish, you know, mm -hmm. since I'm, I'm Mexican. So sometimes if you, if you are uh, uh, a Spanish speaker, you know, it might, it might say something to you. It might make sense in Spanish or in English, but it's a broken down narrative. So what I don't want you to identify, what was that uh, bubble speech about? Because then that gives you the narrative or the description of the painting, and it didn't want to die, you know. Gotcha. So I, I'm, I'm playing with that. I'm, I'm, approaching comics from a formalistic perspective. So okay. I'm very interested in the, in the aesthetics of it, you know, the, the uh, layout of the page, you know, and how can I recontextualize that in a, in a pop, with a pop look, you know? And that's really interesting just to think about the history of comic books and kind of um, how they had this very specific history and, and a very specific audience when they were first circulating and, and now how it's very pervasive as far as movies and and, yeah. and now you're finding it in fine art and in other instances as well. So I think that's interesting how, how much it, it, you see it in popular culture. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what I wanted to, to focus on. I, I was training fine arts and I was uh, uh, an abstract painter, you know, the last eight years of my training. Okay. And then I, was, I became really, really interested in pop culture, you know, uh, particularly in Warhol. 
So that transition for me as an abstract painter, that transition from abstraction to pop art, you know, what, what happened, you know, what was gained, what was lost. So I'm really invested in, in that transition. So that's why I call them comic abstractions, because for me it's that transition from abstraction to a comic book, where you don't make reference to, I mean, I make reference to the comic book, but it's not like a direct right, reference. Somewhere in between. But you see an abstraction, so it's kind of like in between, you know, something yeah. in between. Um, well, maybe you can talk a little bit as well about um, the actual creation of the piece, um, because I think that I've spoken to you before about having studio assistance and, and having help piecing the paintings together, yeah. correct? Yeah, yeah. Actually, it happened by, kind of by accident, mm -hmm. because uh, I got an offer for a show. I said, hey, would you like to have a solo show? I said, sure. When uh, this time September, I said sure, and it was like February, March, and then after I, I said yes, I was like, holy cow, you know what did I say? It's like there's no, I'm not gonna make it, you know, because I knew how long it would take me. Right. So I started doing the first three or four paintings, and I was like, I'm not gonna make it. I was, I started freaking, I, I was freaking out, you know. So I, I said, okay, I need assistance, you know. It's like I, I don't know, you know, I need to do something. So I started looking for people here locally. Couldn't find anybody. I look. All the places like in Florida, like in New York, but they were really expensive. So a friend of mine happened to be in China at that time. I said, well, what if I, do you want me to find out over here? I look in Mexico also, but I just couldn't find anybody. I talked to my former uh, classmates anyway. So I said, sure, why not? You know, I was desperate at that time. So that's how the, the idea started cooking of, ooh, I can outsource this, you know? Mm -hmm. And I found these guys that were trained, that are trained also in fine arts. Mm -hmm. And I discovered there's also workshops that they, you can send in a photograph and they will make an oil painting the size you want for a fee. But these, I found these guys that they work with professional artists too, you know? Like, uh, I, I, mean, I guess they work in a workshop too, I don't know, but I just work directly with them. Okay. So I create the image on the computer, and for okay. me, I, the computer is a really, really important component. It's just a tool for me to. Is that how you break the image? Yeah, out? deconstruct the, the comic book and okay. recontext, recontextualize it. But I don't use filters, you know, like all the default filters. So I just use basically like cut, uh, cut, copy, and paste. So okay. it takes a while. It takes me probably 40 hours to come up with, with an image. Wow. So once the image is fixed, I send the digital file to, to these guys, to my assistants, and then I tell them how I want the background, what do I want to do, I want them to do with that. And then they work on the image so much that when I tell, okay, that's fine, send it to me, and then I finish it here. Okay. But I want to get to the point where I send it to them and they just, they do everything. So I, I become more like an art director, you know? So the idea is mine, the concept. The image is fixed on the computer and it's just a translation, you know? And to me, it's important to go back to like from digital, from analog to digital to analog, and go back to okay, this is an oil on canvas, you know, back to the tradition of painting. So, do you do you miss sometimes just looking at something and seeing this is all my hand, or is it, are you still just really uh, in, in, interested in the idea that you're working on, like you just said? Yeah, no, I mean, it's a totally different process. When I was doing uh, abstract paintings, uh, paintings, it, it didn't matter how much feeling and emotions I was putting into it. At the end, it was just another abstract painting. Okay. So I wanted to do something different. And I, I invest more in the concept, conceptually, you know. And it's not just about formalism, it's not about just uh, composition and aesthetics and color combination, but the idea behind, you know, the layout of the comic book page, uh, the idea of the landscape, you know, what is, what is, talk, what is saying to the viewer. Uh, you know, with abstract expressionist art, I mean, the, the art critic, play a really huge role with them because sure. they will just paint and then the, the art critic will come and make an interpretation to the viewer. Mm -hmm. With pop art, they didn't have a job, you know? Suddenly it's like, hey, I don't need you. You know, you don't have to make an interpretation of my painting. Right. It is what it is right, right in front of you. So I found that really, really interesting. So it's like a combination of both where right. it's, it's right at you. You can see that it's, a, uh, it's comic imagery, but at the same time it's this abstraction where it really pulls you into the painting and makes you think and wonder and, and create connections. And I found really cool that uh, people can see it, people can find those connections you know, to abstraction and to the comic book. It's like, well, this is graphic imagery, but boy, it's, it's not just the comic book, you know, something else. And then they start thinking and wonder. And that's what I really enjoy about doing this, this work. We want to thank Ruben for speaking with us. The exhibition has just been extended through August 20, 2011. More information on the artist, exhibition, and gallery can be found at chriswhirly.com. That's it for art this week. Thanks for watching. So can I just ask who your favorite comic book hero is? Who? Uh, it's hard to say. I mean, I, I, 
Give me a top three. Hmm. Mighty Mouse. Uh, Mighty Mouse. Uh, I want to say uh, Little Lulu, which I only have one painting. I haven't done it yet. Still working on it. Okay. Um, Captain America. Yeah. 